Is sex addiction hereditary? Can my son become a sex addict because his dad is or because his mom is? Are, are my children destined or doomed to be a sex addict because mom and dad are a sex addict? That is a big question. I want to wrestle with you with that because there's not a lot of direct research on this, but I've been seeing about 5,000 of sex addicts and their families, both men and female sex addicts. I've written many books, one called um, Beyond the Bedroom for Adult Children of Sex Addicts, and it shows a lot of research on adult children of sex addicts, when they find out, how they find out, what they find out, how it affects them, and it has a huge range of impacts being an adult child of a sex addict. But is it genetic? Are they doomed? Well, I want to talk about that because I can't tell you how many times sex addiction runs down families, much like alcoholism runs down families. But is it genetic? Probably not. Okay, what happens is, and let me share the story with you here. Addicts of all kinds are spiritually, emotionally, and morally immature. They usually stop developing around somewhere between 12 and 14 years old. And so your kids are being raised by an immature person who doesn't have emotional regulation, who may not make good choices, who may not be able to really even value their spouse significantly because they're stuck in their adolescent development and their addiction is way more important to them than family, friends, or even their spouse. And so your kids are growing up in dysfunction. Now, when a child grows up in dysfunction, the dysfunction is the adult's um, responsibility. Okay, and I have this conversation a lot. So because of that dysfunction, the child's in pain. They're not getting their needs met. They're not getting mature responses. They're trying to navigate an object world where they have to usually perform to stay out of trouble with mom or dad. And they have to medicate when their needs are not being met. Now, some kids medicate through success. They're the football player. They're the cheerleader. They're the, they're the valedictorian. They're the drama queen, whatever. They, they, they medicate in success. Some medicate in drugs. Some medicate in alcohol. Some medicate in overworking and, and being financially successful. Even as a teenager, they, you know, they're making a few thousand dollars a month, right? Or some go to the secret porn world. Now, I will tell you, over interviewing 5,000 sex addicts, most of those men, there is a percentage of them that found their dad's pornography, whether their dad was a preacher or a plumber. And they used their dad's pornography to lay the foundation for their own sexual addiction. Now, these are older gentlemen. Today, if you have an open computer or open cell phone for your teenager, you brought them into a porn store. You literally took their hand and said, hey, let me take you into a porn store, but don't look at anything. So I would encourage you if you're concerned about your children, go to our website and get the porn blocker and get porn blockers on every device, your phones, your TVs, and your computers. Otherwise, you're setting up a, an environment where a child is in pain because their dad's an addict or their mom's an addict, and then you're giving them a porn store and you're saying, don't look at it. That is irresponsible. So if you are already have sex addiction in your family, you want to be super protective about that. Like in my gene pool, alcoholism is there. My kids have never seen alcohol in my house. I haven't had a drink in over 40 years because I know that I'm susceptible to that. So in the same way, the, the your childs are not destined to be sex addicts, but they're destined to medicate in some way unless you can get them where they can talk about their feelings and regulate their feelings, get their needs met in some healthy way. And they might need counseling. They might not. Not every every child needs counseling, but the skills of counseling every child's needs. How to identify feelings, how to communicate them. We have a great book called Emotional Fitness. You could walk them through those principles. But sex addiction is an influence. And seeing your dad lust after things, seeing your mom talk about men in ways that are objects and, and having them watch media that is inappropriate to say the least and sometimes awful. And if you're having all this stuff around a child and it normalizes and sexualizes people, then they're susceptible. 
And you're going to want to ask them questions about masturbation, ask them questions about pornography, so that at least there's somebody inquiring on how they're doing the areas of sexuality. And if you're uncomfortable with that, then their drinking from the pornography or the internet and or worse can go unchecked. And an unchecked behavior like that can lead them to become a sexual addict. So it's not a genetic correlation one-on-one, -on -one, but the environment of dysfunction does create addicts. Okay, and that's been known for many decades. So you can do the best. Now, if you're, you're a spouse of an addict and they don't want to change, this isn't going to change for your kids. Okay, whether you're married or not married, that immature person is still going to be in their life. So you're going to have to be really proactive. We have a thing called Born for War for guys. Princes take longer than frogs for girls to watch so they can understand some of this stuff and how, how to protect their sexuality. But you might need to get some mentors in your spiritual community also to help you in this area so that your children get healthy sexual conversations and not just the imbalance of, uh, of what's going on over here with one of the adults. And so I hope this has been helpful for you because it's a big concern for a lot of ladies. It really is, and men too, where is this going to make my kid a sex act? No, they have free will. They can choose what kind of addictions they want or they can choose to be healthy if you give them the options of having the opportunity to develop skills so they can do life without medication. So if you've yet to subscribe to our channel, I really encourage you to do that. We have lots of helpful information and the comments box is there for you to ask a question. So please do that. We'd love to hear from you. We get back to you as soon as we possibly can. And I hope today has encouraged you and given you hope that the parents don't determine the future of the children, but they can help heal what has been broken.